This question came from a user who wants to set up a report builder report with two date parameters to see the things which happened between two dates. The twist is that they also want to be able to select just the start date and then see only the things which happened on that date rather than from that date. So I've set up a basic example using the YSL Movies database. I have a start date and an end date parameter and I've filled in a value for each at this point. So clicking the view report button will show all the things which happened between those two dates. If I check the null box for the end date, so I don't pass a value to that one, when I click the view report button, I'll see only the things which happened on that specific date. If you want to follow along and use the same data as I'm using, then you'll need a copy of the YSL Movies database, and this video shows you how to get that set up. There's a link in that video's description you can use to download the script file you'll need. Assuming you've done that already, I've got a blank report waiting for me in Report Builder, so we'll get started with creating the basic report. I'll begin by creating a data source to connect to the YSL Movies database. So I'll right click data sources, choose add data source. I'll change its name to movies and then use an embedded connection. I'll make sure I'm pointing to a Microsoft SQL server and then click the build button to get some help with the connection string. The server name, I'm going to type in a shortcut to my local host dot backslash. And then the name of the instance of SQL server I'm using is SQL 2017. And then from there, I can select my database name from the drop down list. I'll go for movies. I can then click the OK button and click OK again. And there's my data source created. The data set is fairly straightforward as well. I can right click on the movies data source and choose our data set. I'll call this one films. And then from the query designer, I'll head into the tables folder, find the film table, and then I'll just select the title and the release date. That's really all we need for this particular report. I'll click OK, and then I'm just going to add an order by clause to the query while I'm here. So in the query box, I'm going to type in order by, and then film.release date in descending order. That bit's not necessary, but it helps just to see the results a little more clearly. So having done that, I can click OK and I'll add a basic table to the report just to display the results. So I'll start by getting rid of my page footer and then removing this placeholder title text box. Right click into the body of the report and choose to insert a table and then just drag that up to the top left hand corner. I only need two columns in this table so I'll delete one of the three columns. Then I can assign the title and the release date to the remaining two columns. Just change the column widths. I'll format my release date cell so that it looks a little more readable when we run the report. So I'll use the basic format drop down list here to choose date. Do some basic background coloring for the top row, the header row. And then I want to make sure that I can actually see all the text that will be presented to me in the table. So just to avoid this font rendering bug that you may have encountered yourself, I'm going to highlight all the cells in the table and then change from the default font and then back to the default font and then a quick run of the report to see the basic results. And that shouldn't look too terrible at that point. Next, I'd like to create my two parameters. So let's head back to the design view to do that. As always, I've got a couple of choices. I could either create some report parameters first and then apply some filters to my data set, or I can create some query parameters by modifying the query of the data set, which will create the report parameters for me. I'm going to start with some query parameters. I'll right click the films dataset and choose dataset properties. And then in the query box, I'm going to modify the query again by adding a where clause. So I'll just insert this between the from and the order by. I'll say where. And I've got a couple of choices for how I can write the criteria. I'll keep it simple and straightforward for this example. I'll say film.release date and then use the between operator and then make up the names of two parameters. I'll call the first one at start date. And the second one, after the and operator, I'll say at end date. Having done that, I can then click OK. And you'll see that I get my two report parameters created for me automatically, which are tied to the query parameters I've just created. Of course, you can rearrange your query, your report parameters in this grid at the top. If you can't see that already, head to the view menu and then choose the parameters option there. I just want to make sure that these values, these parameters are treated as dates. So I'm just going to double click each of my two uh, report parameters and then set the data type from text to date time. And then when I've done that for both parameters, choosing date time for each, I'll run the report again. 
and give it a really quick test by typing in two dates. I'll go for the 1st of the 1st, 2016, and then the 31st of the 12th, 2016. That was meant to be 2016. And then when I view the report, I'll see all the films that were released in that specific year. Next, I'd like to make the end date parameter optional. And to do that, I can head back to the design view, double click on the end date parameter, and then choose to allow a null value. So checking this box means that I don't have to pass a value into that parameter when I run the report. Let's just check that that works if I click OK and then run the report. I'll just uncheck the null box to begin with. I want to pass in the same values we've just used. So the 1st of the 1st, 2016, and then the 31st of the 12th, 2016. And if I hit enter or click the view report button, that part's still working normally. But if I check the box to allow a null value for the end date and view the report again, I don't see anything because the where clause of my query is now asking to show all the films whose release date is between that date and null, and that clearly makes no sense. So we need to fix our query now to handle the null value passed in through the end date parameter. To fix this problem, let's head back to the design view, and then we can right click on our films dataset and choose dataset properties. And we need to fix this part of our where clause, the part which refers to the end date parameter. I want to tell my query to try to use the end date parameter as long as there is a value to use. Otherwise, if it's null, then use the start date parameter instead. And the simplest way to encapsulate that logic in SQL is to use the isNull function. So in front of the end date parameter, I'll say isNull, at end date, and then at the end of that, I'll type in a comma and say at start date. So that simply will use the end date if there's a value to use, and if there isn't a value to use in the end date parameter, it will use the start date parameter instead. So it will therefore find all the films released between the start date and the start date. So let's click OK and then run the report again. And if I fill in just the 1st of the 1st, 2016, in fact, I need a slightly better date for this. I want a date on which films have actually been released. Let's go for the 8th of September. So 08 slash 09 slash 2016. There were two films released on the 8th of September 2016, or at least in this database there are, and there they appear. But if I uncheck the null box and I provide a value for the end date parameter, let's go 31 slash 12 slash 2016. When I hit enter again, I'll expand the range to find all the films released to the end of December. We can take this same basic approach if we're using just report parameters and avoiding query parameters. So to do that, we can head back to the design view and then head back to the dataset properties of the film's dataset. Then I'm just going to delete the where clause from the query altogether. So I'm going to highlight those two lines and then backspace or delete them from the query. While I'm still in this dialog box, I'm then going to head onto the filters page and I can click the add button to add a basic dataset filter. I can choose to apply the filter to the release date column and then change the operator to say between. And then for the value, for the first option, I'm going to click the FX button and then head to the parameters list and double click my start date parameter. For the second parameter, again, things are a little different. I want to not refer not just to the end date parameter. I want to check if the end date parameter is null and if so, use the start date parameter value instead. So I can click the FX button to launch the expression builder. I don't have access to the is null function in the expression builder in report builder. This is using the visual basic language, of course, not SQL. So what we need to do is write a slightly longer expression using the if function. So I can find my common functions category and then find the program flow section and then double click the if function first. I then want to check if the value of the end date parameter is nothing. There's a couple of different ways of doing that in Visual Basic. I'm going to use the technique from the inspection category. I'm going to double click the is nothing function. Once I've done that, I can head to my parameters list and I can double click my end date parameter and then close one set of round brackets. So the first part of my if function looks like so. Having done that, I can type in a comma, and if that condition is true, I want to use the value of the start date parameter instead. So I can double click start date, then type in another comma, and if that first condition is not true, so if there is a value for the end date parameter, I want to use that value. So I can double click my end date parameter, and then close the final set of round brackets. 
so the full expression looks like so. Having done all that, I can click OK and OK again, and then I can run the report. And the same basic technique works now. If I type in a particular date, let's go for that same 8th of the 9th, 2016. And if I click View Report, it will show all the films released on that date. But if I uncheck the null box and type in a different date, let's go for 31st of the 12th, 2016 again, hit Enter, and then I'll see all the films released between the start date and the end date. So there we go. That's our basic system set up. I think that answers the original question fairly neatly. Um, if not, feel free to carry on asking more questions and I'll do my best to carry on answering them. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.